didn't really have a clear plan. I was just like squirreling away books, and I, for you know, as they piled up over the years, I didn't remember what were in those boxes that were getting dusty, and so I uh, decided to cash in my uh, stash of books on the idea that if I succeeded, I would get more books, and it was time to you know go all in. Well, one of the skills I did over time learn how to do is build bookshelves. It may be the only thing I know how to build, but I built all these, and, and uh, so all I needed to do was order some lumber and buy a power saw and some nails, and <laughs> I would be able to create a store. Actually, there are a number of things I like uh, about coming here, I, just for the elevator alone, quite frankly. You know, what with the, having the manned elevator and everything. But I love just sort of the actual tactile sense of walking around. Uh, there's shelves like these that are totally loaded with books. Every used bookstore has its sort of reflects the interest and personality of the you know, person running it. I like it. It's quiet and it smells like old books, which is like the best smell in the world. The funny thing, I like the smell of old bookstores, <laughs> the used bookstores. They have a distinctive smell. It's not like a new bookstore and uh, it kind of, I don't know, it soaks up all that ethos and I enjoy it. Well, I tried, you know, just speaking of the bookstore, I tried to create a, a simple look that would look like a bookstore that had been here for like a long time. And I, I succeeded in that because people are always surprised when I tell them I've only been here about three years. I like, um, I don't know, I like them age, like if they have marks in them, and I like that. Because you look up, all around you, books are, are stacked way up. Uh, trying to work with the, like, the really tall ceilings, my first thought was to go all the way up to the top with, with shelving. And I actually built shelves that big. And I put the first one up, it looked scary tall. What I like about this store is just the, the sheer volume of books and the varied subjects. It's, it's amazing the, the collection that he has. Um, I love the store. I found a bunch of books that are out of print and I can't find anywhere else. If it's not even online, then it's really a hard to find book. Dylan Thomas. Totally out of print. Can't find it anywhere. Not even on Amazon, actually. And uh, I sort of make a point of doing it kind of old school way of just, you know, having out of print books. I don't do remainders. I don't do sale books. I don't, don't do anything else except books. But for me, there's just really nothing like the experience of, the tactile experience of the book. I, I sort of varied it. So you'll notice that some t shelves are taller than the others. And I thought that would break it up and make the space look uh, more, uh, more interesting. You know, books are, are, in a lot of ways, art. Kind of like letter writing is an art. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in having those volumes and having things on hand and having that tactile experience of reading a book. We've had, um, you'll notice there's small bits of art around and about, um, just odd things like that little statue over there. I like to have, you know, things for people to look at. And we've had a couple uh, um, art shows here. One of the things that I enjoy about the bookstore is the cat, of course. You don't see that everywhere. So I like, you know, a bookstore with a cat, a bar with a dog, that kind of thing. It's, it really helps. Yeah, the cat. Hodge the cat. I call him Chicago's most famous cat. He's certainly Chicago's most obnoxious cat sometimes. So anyway, there it goes. <laughs> uh, people would always be asking me, where's the cat? There is this beautiful old gray cat who is feisty and funny and rocking and rolling. Not afraid at all. <laughs> Not hot, she just walked out in charge. He was like a little king of everything right, uh, right from the start. Uh, everybody loves him, he's just the character. He's all, and he's uh, quite the acrobat, too. He's just, he just climbs all over. Well, back in the 1970s or so, there was no way to predict that, you know, the used bookstores would become a sort of a dying industry that uh, First would falter on the internet, and then now, not only do you not have to go to bookstores to buy books, you don't have to have books to read them. You can just buy these electronic devices. Um, I I don't like them. I don't like reading off a screen. Um, I like, but I'm a librarian, so I um, I, I need books in front of me. You know, I was talking with a friend recently who said that she was lamenting the um, the demise of a number of independent bookstores. It makes me cry. I think they're like part of America and it's really sad to me when I see bookstores close. So it really ruins that part of the, you know, the romance of, of building 
your library and finding really cool, hard to find books that you really, you know, sometimes spent years looking for. And I know, I know some of the old uh, collectors have, have mentioned to me how it's all kind of ruined for them the way that, you know, <laughs> that the hunt was part of the fun and now that's all, you know, not necessary. But oh well, progress. <laughs> um, but for me personally, I, I just really like a good old fashioned book. Because there's really not a lot of used bookstores in the South Loop or even downtown uh, anymore. So I'm, in that sense, uh, it's, it's a, you know, one of the last ones standing. <laughs> it never hurts to fill your head with a few lines of Shakespeare now and then. It's just, it's never a bad idea. <laughs> I'm not completely convinced that bookstores are going to go away. And, and this sort of vintage bookstore is an example of that. I think that this is always going to be appealing to people like me. At least I hope so. I don't know. Books are good. As far as me, as, as I once quipped, my life is an open bookstore. <laughs>